In case you haven't heard yet, HTMX is the new trend. Turns out there's a lot of developers that don't actually want to write front end code. And I have a spicy take you might not expect from me. I think that's a good thing. Let's get into it. What is HTMX? Well, to understand HTMX, I think it's important to first understand HTML, specifically HTML templates. For a long time, backend frameworks like Laravel, Rails, whatever's going on in Python land, I'm scared to check nowadays. These solutions have all had ways to make an HTML template on the backend. So instead of just writing HTML the traditional way, you would write something like HTML with pieces inside of it that are template strings that come from your other programming language. So you can insert a username or a profile picture URL, but the templating language is the thing that gets kind of translated into HTML and that happens on the backend. So if a change happens on the page, it has to generate a whole new HTML page. There's no interaction activity beyond links and forms and things built into the browser. So if I want to have a button where when I click it, it changes to a loading state. And when it's done, it shows the thing that it did just in there without reloading the page. You can't do that with any of these backend frameworks. And as a result, a lot of backend engineers who need to build an interactive UI on their front end have kind of been forced to learn React and other tools like it. And this is where the spicy take comes in. I think a big part of why React gets so much pushback is because a lot of developers who don't want to use React end up feeling like they have to in order to do basic things like have a menu that opens up and has content inside of it, have a send button that will let you update the content of the page without having to reload the entire HTML. In order to adopt React, you have to adopt a lot of things that might be really outside of what you're trying to do, which is just make the new post appear in the feed. And I think this is what makes HTMX so magical. It allows for people who are coming from a backend background that want to have a better front end, do it without having to leave the language and the tools they're used to in the backend. You don't have to adopt this whole new mindset and set of tools if you're coming from a backend mindset. Before we go too much further, quick brief on HTMX. The TLDR is they wrote the JavaScript so you don't have to. They let you in your HTML you send to the user, put some additional instructions that allow the HTMX to update things without having to run a bunch of your own custom code on the client. This example here, you have bound button to HTMX host to this URL. What this does is now when you click the button, instead of that having to trigger a form or run custom JavaScript, HTMX's JavaScript will traverse the DOM, see that you bound this here, and now when you click that button, their JavaScript JavaScript is going to trigger your backend on this endpoint with a post. And the HX swap says that whatever it responds with, make that the new outer HTML. The TLDR is that whatever you return HTML wise, that's the new content of the page. And this lets you on any element define posts and gets and HTML swaps. And that type of behavior was something you would have to write a good bit of custom JavaScript before. They wrote the JavaScript, so you don't have to. Oh, the best stack video has a decent base example. That's a fair point. So you defined to do's, which calls an HTML JS sex template, not too dissimilar from React in terms of how it looks and feels to use, but that's not going to be code that runs on the client. That's code that runs on the server and it generates new HTML that gets sent to the user. And then the slash posts with toggle here, it finds that value in your database. In this case, just an object. You get the idea. If to do, then we swap the complete state and then we return that item swapped. So now on the HTML for that item, if we find it here to do item, you'll see HX post is the ID for this post with that endpoint. And now when that endpoint returns new HTML, I'm assuming you're gonna put, yeah, HS target is closest div. So it's gonna target the div directly above and update it with whatever new HTML you sent. And the HX swap says where to swap it. And now that's a full stack backend front end solution. Huge shout out to Ethan for providing that. If y'all aren't subscribed, I'll be sure to put his handle in the description of this because he's a legend and he's quickly gonna become the biggest TypeScript focused YouTuber. I think I need to pull out a diagram where you guys are gonna wanna kill me. So let's do that. I think we can agree that there's a spectrum between the server and the client. I have a video where I try to define full stack and I did an okay job. It's tough to define because the spectrum is so weird and every person fits somewhere along it and prefers to spend time in one place rather than the other. But if you want to have like really interactive application with tons of different user interfaces with page session times that are hours long, like Twitch, you're probably gonna need to spend a lot of time on the client side. But if you're trying to optimize every byte from every packet, sending millions of like video packets all over the world, you're spending a lot more time optimizing on the back. End. But there's also the space in between where people are experimenting, making better user interfaces, and generally building the interactions between the front end and the back end. Before we had a technology like Next, this felt very much like our front end was this small spot on top, back end was this big spot on bottom. And if you just needed HTML, you could do that with a template and go to like here. But if you needed more back end stuff on the front end, you couldn't really do it. We had stuff like Firebase, that's goal was to let you query whatever you need or Hasura and stuff like that, that expanded slightly here. I'm gonna call this the GraphQL era. 
So the goal of GraphQL was to provide a almost like a translation layer, like a standard between the back end and the front end for how these things interface with each other. And this was how we decided we would build applications going forward. You'd have a back end team at your company, you'd have a front end team at your company. The front end team would never touch the back end, the back end team would never touch the front end, and you had GraphQL, this thing in the middle that would be the translation layer. Before then, there was much closer relationships between the front end and back end. Even when you were designing a REST API, usually that was to the front end spec or the back end was defining it in the front was consuming it, but they would have to interface a lot more. But with GraphQL in the middle, you now had a thing that you interfaced with instead. But that also made iteration a good bit slower. It was faster than before where everybody was just shouting at each other all the time. Wouldn't it be nice if on front end, I could just go to there or if on back end, I could just go to here. It's like if the concern of your company, and this is probably the, the most controversial thing I'm going to bring up here. Most companies focus does not need to be this whole thing. Most companies differentiate or the thing that, that is unique about them is a much smaller sliver. So it might be that you have the best UI in the industry. Or it might be that you have the cheapest servers so you can scale in a way no one else can. But very few companies are actually trying to cover all of this with specialists. So how can somebody who's specializing in the area your company's focused on, like here, scale down to the back end without having to become a specialist in that too? As I said earlier, y'all might think of me as a front end guy, but my history was primarily back end up until recently. I didn't write my first line of React code until 2018. I was almost entirely back end up until that point. I got into front end because I wanted to build better user experience experiences and help Twitch with the website rewrite, I ended up falling in love with React. So much so that I kind of left backend behind and got really, really focused on building good front-end experiences. But then I started working at a different company where the backend teams weren't as competent. We didn't have the GraphQL layer between things, and it was impossible to get changes out, even small things. Like I couldn't make the changes necessary because the team was in Poland and asleep half the time. It was nearly impossible for me to move. And that's where Next.js came in. I'm going to copy this diagram here and go back to the old way. So what I was building required required a really, really good interactive front end because it was a music group listening app. It was people hanging out in a room together, listening to music together with little avatars and shit. It, was, it needed to feel like an app because it was. It was a page that you were supposed to spend hours upon hours sitting there, hanging out with your friends. The back end was just a way for us to keep track of what song was playing. And as such, I needed more ways from the front end to get the data we needed to play the right song, update the song playing, keep everybody in sync and just build a good experience. And when back end would make a dumb change, like report the song name too early, the expectation is, I would re-architect the front end to deal with all of their bad decisions in our state machine. And it was getting untenable really quickly. This is why I started looking into Next. And the thing about Next is that it takes this front end bubble, which I'm going to rename now to React. I'll call it React Client because this was before server components. I think it's important to know, like this is the React Client and this is whatever backend API. What Next allowed for was to go exactly as far as I needed. It didn't bring me to like crazy database architectures to hosting my own servers and boxes, but with Next plus React and importantly, Vercel and serverless as well, it became very easy for me to define the exact backend functions I needed in my front end application. It let me as a React front end engineer go exactly as deep as I needed to. And then from that point forward, rely on services. So this would be things like Vercel, things like AWS Amplify, things like Supabase. But Next got me quite a bit further, and then SaaS could take over from there. This was a magical moment <laughs> to suddenly not have to think as much about all of the things we needed to build a good application, to build a good experience for our users, and to not need a dedicated backend team with like eight engineers we were paying way too much money, and they still couldn't keep up with one Theo on the front end. So once we also had a Theo going exactly far enough into backend, and then three services that we would rely on on top of it, suddenly we could build and iterate the right thing for our users much faster. And this also meant I was becoming more a backend engineer. And honestly, I still consider myself more backend than front end, especially after Next, because I spent all my time thinking about infrastructure and services and how to orchestrate these things in a way that makes it easier to build and iterate on our applications. And this is where HTMX comes in. I'm gonna copy paste this top half one last time. Before React, backend already could kind of do this with the templates. It could go a little bit further, but as soon as you needed interaction, you would have to pull something like React in to have your page that had content automatically update. There were tools like Livewire and Turbo that would allow you to send HTML down to a small JS bundle on the app to rewrite whatever content was on the page as though it was doing an application style like update, even though what it was actually doing was sending a whole new HTML file from the server. This is how things like GitHub work. This is how things like the hey.com email app work. And as good as it can be to have everything based on your backend, it's still rough because you have to wait for the entire content from the server before you can change anything on the client because the client doesn't know anything about how the user interacts. It just sits there waiting for the server to send HTML. And this is why if you try using the hey.com email app in like Australia, it runs 
terribly. Rich Harris has a bunch of content about this. All of his talks recently, especially talk about how important it is to have good interactions on the client for this reason in particular. So with just HTML templates, you can probably get this far with Turbo or Livewire or Live View in the Elixir world. You can get like this far. Goal of HTMX is to get so far that you don't really think about React as much anymore. You're just trying to build an intense update experience where the average piece of content on the page changes a lot. You probably want to write custom JavaScript for that still. But the goal of HTMX, I'll just put this on the bottom here. The goal of HTMX was to extend the server so far that if your application's goal was to spend to here, Previously, this range would have included React in it. So if you wanted to have your application specialize and be a good experience in this range, doesn't matter how good you are at backend, you kind of felt like you had to adopt React or something like it. And the result was a lot of developers who didn't want to use React falling into this zone right here and getting stuck with React. And that's the thing that makes me so excited about HTMX is that this box right here is full of backend engineers who don't want to be here and they hate us for it. The same way many engineers, especially like me pre-Next, I hated when I had to fight with the team to make change happen in this little box here. It was miserable because this is not where our company's differentiator was. Our differentiator was in this area and I was stuck here in order to make things work. And when I could sass this part off and Next.js this part off, all of a sudden I could focus my effort where I cared about which was here. HTMX is doing the same thing from the opposite side. It's for developers who want to focus on this part. They want to make really cool backends that serve things really well. And they want the user experience to be good enough, but their focus isn't the animation on every menu. Their focus is providing a good enough user experience. And HTMX makes it so they don't have to adopt React to get there for a lot of things. And that's really cool. So what do you think? I know a lot of my audience is more front end focused, but Backend's cool too. And I think this will allow us to get along better with backend engineers. I really feel like a lot of the hatred towards the tools and the people on the front end side comes from a disdain for having to use these things to solve what are perceived as simple problems. You shouldn't need to adopt React to update one item in a to-do list. And HTMX solves that problem really well. I think the same way Next makes it so we don't have to bug the backend engineers as much, HTMX makes it so the front end engineers don't have to be involved when you're making a decent UI for your complex service. I see a very exciting future for HTMX. It does feel like the natural evolution of the old Rails era. What do you think? Are you more back end or more front end? Is HTMX interesting to you or are you going to stick with Next? Tell me in the comments. If you want to learn more about how I use Next incorrectly for more back end type stuff, I'll pin a video there all about that. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.